Hey there, it is Scuzzball doing another take on this beginner's box. This is the third time we've done it, so let's hope this goes well. I'm joined today with Ghost there. Hello. Hey. He's not as enthusiastic as he was 16 minutes ago, but that's okay. <laughs> We are going to be doing a review on the Star Wars Edge of Rebellion, Age of Rebellion, Beginner's Box yes. by Fantasy yes. Flight. Yes, we're back to yeah. Force and Rebellion, Age of Destiny, Edge of Edge. Force. <laughs> and First Order of the Edge. We're going to stuff that out, even though it's completely different. We're going to be giving it the wrong name. Oh, yes. Has to be. It's a running thing. Alright, so, a review in a nutshell. The beginner's box is a beginner's box. It is exactly what it says it is, and it does exactly that. It is for both GMs and players who have never role-played ever in their life, and just want to get into it, and they want to get into Fantasy Flight's version, which is, of course, a completely different rule set to every other role-playing game that exists out there. So it's quite handy in bringing new people in. It has everything you need to run a game. It has extras that make the game easier to do. So the dices and the tokens and stuff like that. It's really good. Only problem is, it is a beginner's box and it is strictly for that. It is not for seasoned players, nor is it for seasoned GMs of this rule set. You can use it for the stuff that's in it, as Ghost will say. Yep. But if you just want the adventure, don't bother. All right, breaking it down. So, oh yeah, last point. If you already have any of the other beginner's box, so Edge of the Empire, Edge, or the Force of Destiny one, if you already have them, there's no real point in getting the beginner's box unless you specifically want more dice or the map or just something else. The rule sets and all three are very similar. These rule books, as we've all looked at them, they're only really covering the bare essentials on how to run a game. So, review, perfect for beginners, not so good for intermediate to advance, and you don't need to get another one if you have the other two. I agree. Even though I bought all three. <laughs> we are doing this for a living. Are we? <laughs> oh, yeah? Anyway, financial fortunes aside, so the contents of the box, what do you get for the price you pay? So online, it's for $30, Yep, recommended retail. In that box, you get one 32-page adventure book, one 48-page adventure book, four character folios, one full-colored double-sided fold-out map, which is actually really good, 14 dice, and a bunch of tokens. And an introduction sheet, but don't bother about it. It doesn't actually say anything. Except it does say where to go for the link to get the second part of the adventure, which I'll touch on a bit later. So, the contents of the box. You get quite a bit for what you pay for. For the $60 mark, I'm not sure it's good, but that being said, the dice by itself in Australia is something, what, 15 to $20. Yeah, well, that being said, it's meant to be $29.95. It's a recommended for retail, so... Yeah. We live in a country that's just... Oh. But, okay, looking at it from the American and Australian... I mean, American and Canadian and probably, I think, Europe as well. For their recommended retail price, you are getting quite a good deal. Ghost, what are you? You bought all three of them and you love them. Well, I think they're worth it for the rule book, the dice, the counters and the pre-gens. And I think at twenty nine ninety five. The dice are overpriced at $15, and the fact that you kind of need them for the game, and especially considering if you shell out and buy the core book, or all three core books, like we have, and you bought it as well, so I mean, our group, four core books have been sold, and they're $60 here each. Hmm. I think they could have got, cut us a bit of a deal on the dice, but that being said, if you look at it just as it stands, the money for the dice, the rule book's reasonably solid, the counters are cool, and the map you said you like, and I like using the pre-gens as NPCs, I think at $30 it's, you know, it's, it's, it's okay, I get use out of it. For that, you are getting quite a bit, and the quality of what you get is actually quite good. One of the things I always harp back to is on the back of each book. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. 
On the back of the adventure book and the back of the rule book, you have a list of tables that you will always refer to. They are your difficulty tables, your critical rolling table, critical injury tables, and your skill tables, as well as what each dice image represents. Because when you're first starting off, it is hard to remember that. Yep, I agree. Because they're on the back of the book, not in the middle of the book, they are literally on the back cover. To get to that is really easy. So having that crucial information at your fingertips is incredibly good. So that's really well done. The rule book as well, I find is streamlined. It's a rule book as opposed to a tie-in book. One thing that I hate with other role-playing games is when the rule book is not a rule book per se, but more a where you go to when it tells you in the adventure to flip to it. It's a flip to book. Yeah. It has no information. There's no continuity in the book. It literally has no start and no finish. It's you're reading for a bit of a section and then it suddenly stops and changes from combat all the way to role playing a love scene between two aliens or something like that. You're just, what? The rule book is a standalone rule book. It is the bare necessities for running a game. It doesn't even have character creation. But the rules that are in there will allow you to play any game. So. Yeah, certainly with the pre gens, yeah, for sure. Yeah, with the pre gens. Like, it's designed for a pre gen, which that's why the beginner's box is good, is because everything you need is in there. So, yeah, I have no complaints with the rule book. I even use it every now and then when I'm role playing some of my other adventures. It's because all the rules are right there and it's only 48 pages, not 126 or no, it's 200 and something. Any crucial information that I need that's just basics that I just slip my mind, it's easy to find. It's even got a couple of different classes in ships or NPCs that you can use as cannon fodder. So it's got everything you need to run an adventure. Not fully, but just in the middle of adventure and you need something on the side to refer to for rules. Uh, we'll get to the adventure book last because there's a lot to say about it. The map is good. The map is about an A3 piece of paper, fully colored, good details. The map has on one side a zoomed in picture of the entire base broken up into boxes so you can use them for distance reference and movements. Has all the doors, all the rooms, has labels for all the rooms. So moving throughout the base is very easy. With the tokens, the tokens fit quite well onto that. On the other side of the map is an area shot of the space and surroundings. The base only takes up what a couple of inches in the middle and around it is all the bushland. There's a couple of different, like a wreck of a ship. There's a few different hooks for the second part of the adventure to use and also the last part of the beginner's box does leave the main base and go into the bush a little bit. So you have that area to use. It is really handy because if you wanted to make this a standalone adventure for seasoned players, the map of the surrounding is really good for having everything you need to look at it and go, okay, here's the base. This is where the base of operations is going to start. You have this here, this here, this here. I can put this here, this here, and this here, and you can really build on that. So the map is really good for just having a visual of what you're working with. The dice, as Joe said, they're good. Tokens? I like the tokens. You like the tokens? Yes. I don't use them as much as you, but I still think they're a cool thing. Yeah. It's kind of annoying because we're on the other side of the world to use the tokens. It's more for if you were right in front of me, but the tokens are good. The images on them are very good. You've got a token for each of the pregens, plus each of the characters inside the adventure module you have a token for. Plus you've also got an ATST and I think a X-Wing. I need to find my tokens again. They are really well detailed. They don't look like crap. They're yep. a good size, which is something that I hate. A lot of the time I get undersized tokens and it is really annoying. Oh yeah, I agree. A nice, what was it, about two inches diameter. It's a good one. Solid cardboard, double-sided, so there's a picture on both sides. Good, it's not cheaped out. Yep. 
they're a good token. And they even went to the distance of the ATST tokens are larger than personnel tokens. I like the material so, too. Mm. Like they're a solid printing, like the surface is nicely printed and they feel solid, not, not weak. Yeah, it would take a lot to break them. They would last quite a long while. They are a good set of tokens. It sounds stupid, but if you're going to be using a lot, even the pregens, you can just use them as generic tokens in any of the games that you use. They're really good. They're reusable. So we both think they're brilliant. All right, the adventure book. Now, Ghost, when I was running you through the game, yep. what did you think? Um, being an experienced role player, I found the process somewhat frustrating because I wanted to play it how we would normally play it and how I would normally play my character. And Which is going off on tangents. Well, it's just you, I do what I normally do and the adventure itself... Alex does that a lot. Yeah. And the adventure just doesn't want you to do that. It's definitely a beginner's guide. And I think that's... If people are going to run into trouble with it, it's that. You've got to realise that's what it's for. It's designed... Have you ever played before? And if the answer's no, then yeah, they're going to hold your hand and say, well, do you want to open the door? And mm. we're sort of like, well, what the fuck are you talking about? No, I want to use the air vent because if we go down the air vent, we can possibly come down here and then we can blow that up. And then, and, and it's like, no, 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 no. We're trying to teach <laughs> you mechanics and stuff. Do you want to open the door? No, you stupid. We're going to use the air vent, and we're going to go to the power generator, and put the poison into the thing, and then it's going to do the other thing, and it's like, no, no. Do you want to open the door? So we get in this whole sort of like a feedback loop where it's just like, oh, I don't like this. But <laughs> if you're a beginner, that's the whole point. I mean, a lot of beginners sit there going, I don't know what to do. They've never played. Mm -hmm. They're like, they like the idea, but they don't know what to do, and they don't have confidence yet on just taking the lead. And the adventure was very much sort of, do you want to shoot the guy? Okay. Do you want to open the computer? Do you want to do this? It sort of gives you those ideas all the way through it. Mm. You were absolutely frustrated when you said, I want to do this. And I said, I can't do that. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> and I was really lost. And it was. It's In a normal adventure book, it has contingencies for if the player decides that they're going to go off on a single slash two man destructive war path and do completely everything they shouldn't be doing, this is what to do and this is how to handle it. In the adventure book and the beginner's box, it doesn't have any of that. All those little sidebars that you usually have of contingencies is filled up with pretty much rules, actually. That's, that's what it is. Because it's expecting that the GM as well as the player is new to the game. Correct. Correct. Which is something... <clears throat> we often talk about it from the point of view of the player, but... This guide mm. also is there to teach the GM the rules as well. Hmm. It even has at the back of the adventure... Yeah, at the back of the adventure book, what to do in certain situations. Say, if the players have failed all their dice rolls, and it would mean that the story will come to a grinding halt. It gives you little role-playing tips on how to progress the story forwards without having to rely on skipping dice rolls or putting some arbitrary mechanism just to get the story back on track. So, yeah, it is for basic GMers. The railroading, okay. So, yeah, the railroading is really, really railroaded. You cannot break free of it either way. But when I was playing with your son... Yep, who's seven. ...has an imagination of the entire world's population of kids in one mind... Having a railroad adventure was a lifesaver. I can't stress enough how much when you're dealing with someone who very, very imaginative and their ideas are really good a lot of the time, you can't just say no because it's a good idea. You want to always give the players a bit of leeway, um, but if they're just shouting ideas at you all the time and saying, look, how about we try this or how about we go this... Like, whoa, slow down, slow down, slow down. In a normal adventure, I wouldn't be able to keep up. He'd say, oh, no, 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 I've got this really good idea where where the ATST comes in and, and, and it's got all these troops in it, but but I know about this stuff and it's a part of my backstory and it's really cool. Like, Dude, that is really awesome. In a normal adventure, I would sit down and think about it and go, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Let's chuck that in. I would be stopping the whole time. Oh, your son is just a prodigy. Really, <laughs> he's a freak of imaginative nature. But because the adventure is railroaded, it does not give me any leeway to go either side. So it is as simple as, okay, look, really good, but no. Yeah. So it helps in keeping the track, the game on track. 
So yeah, in terms of le- teaching the beginners on how the game works, it runs through it really well. Like you said, it's do you want to open the door? Well, you don't really get much of a choice there, do you? No, not a not a great deal. No, not a great deal. But the reason why they do that is because as soon as you hit that, it then opens up a new mechanic for you to use. The one good thing I like about the adventure is that it touches on pretty much all the crucial mechanics that you need to know about the game, and it does it once. It doesn't do it over and over and over again. There are multiple combats, but each combat is different in a way. First one is a standard one. The second one you're fighting against enemies where you could... The second time where you actually have to fight there's more enemies and they are harder you're going up from basic footmen to stormtroopers and then above that you think the third one is you need to use a stun setting on your gun Mm. if you want to try and capture the important people alive so it's touching on different mechanics as well as that you use your mechanics skill your hacking skill do you want to open the door no Okay, okay, let me rephrase this. You're going to open the door. And you're going to use your hacking skill. And you're going to use your hacking skill. <laughs> That's how it works. And for good reason. Because I need to show you your hacking skills, how to use them. So yeah, all in all, it does exactly what it needs to do. I think that's the main thing. You're paying money for a beginner's box to teach you the game, and it does exactly that. And it also gives you a bit of extra stuff. That's brilliant. The last part I'll touch on is there is a adventure tied onto it that you can download for free off the website. That introduction sheet that comes with the Age of Rebellion box gives you the link to that. It is a 30 page adventure off the top of my head and it has everything you need in a normal adventure and that's key. It actually is a proper adventure path. Now Ghost, you didn't actually like it. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. That that one. I, I didn't mind either the Edge of the Empire one or the Force and Destiny one. I adjusted both of them heavily to fit actually playing it as a regular adventure, but both of those I was able to adjust easily enough and I did not mind them, but uh, I really don't dig the Age of Rebellion one. <laughs> Spoiler alert. So what part of it didn't you like? Because you explained this much better than I did. My problem with the whole thing was the fact that there's the two moths that are rivals. Okay, fair enough. That part I don't have a problem with. Uh, it's a moth and a moth and a admiral. Okay, so a moth and an admiral. So they're both reasonably high up there in the chain of command. Um, the difference sort of plays in the in because it does have a lot of story hooks. So that a moth and an ad, the admiral can play a bit, but. That's for later on if you want to try and craft a new adventure. Anyways, go on. Um, now, I didn't mind that. They've sort of sometimes modelled the uh, some, of, some of the Imperial stuff after Nazi Germany in certain areas. And one mm. thing Hitler did was often pitted his uh, officers against each other. He felt that somehow created better, stronger survival of the fittest kind of thing, which, you know, mm. uh, didn't really work, luckily for us. Um, <laughs> so... I understood sort of that idea that they were trying to play on the rivalries and that sort of mentality, but at the same time, the the whole base being secret, you take over the base, you have it, and then they try to take it back, and nobody knows about it. And it's like, that doesn't doesn't work. You can hide a base from the rebels, that makes Mm. sense. But this is a base that's hidden within the Empire from other Imperials. And we're not talking about something like the Death Star, which would still be pretty hard to actually hide um, due to its size, Mm. but everyone that was involved there was only involved in that that project. We had Star Destroyers would be coming to this planet, you know, not maybe the fleet, but there'd be one of them to... or resupply ships Mm. or something. At some point, stuff would be going on. Someone would probably have learned about it. It might not be as big a secret as it was meant to, and the fact that we were sort of meant to take it over and then we hold it until they go oh, right, we'll come, and then they attack us trying to take it back, Mm. or whatever. I I just felt this was a bit... I thought it was better to have possibly said that it was secret, and it had a no-com sort of thing for most of the time, except maybe once every three months or whatever it was, or whatever the time frame is, it's meant to send an an all-clear signal, which we Mm. wouldn't know. 
we wouldn't know that. We wouldn't know that that might be their procedure, and we wouldn't know what the all-clear signal would be. We were probably just ripping off all the, the data coming in, copying it, sending it on like we were meant to, and then the all-clear didn't go, they know there's something wrong, and then they send the force to you know, attack us. I prefer something like that, rather than the idea that it was completely hidden and nobody knows about it except for the Moff or the Admiral, whoever's, whoever's base it was. And then he comes with his... Tri- it just didn't ring realistic enough for me. As well as that in the second part, it's... Um, so the first part is, you know, if the Rebels know about this base, they send you in to clear it out, which, by the way, I don't think first levels, in inverted commas, would be sent onto this sort of mission. Um, but... The second part, the free downloaded one, is you now have the base, it's yours, you need to man it, staff it, and be prepared for the retaliation attack from the moth. Yeah, nah. I just... Like you said, even if you Even if you beat him a bit, at some point, they were, even if you won, I just, um, I just can't see it being... Unless he took just a handful of people that somehow nobody else knew the base even remotely existed, and you beat that one attack force completely, and, like, no one knew that he was coming. Otherwise, you know, it's sort of like, yeah, we kicked his butt. And mm. they would have go away, and then they'd say, okay, um, yeah, they did kick our butt. So now we're going to come with the Star Destroyer, and we're either going to drop ATATs and just level the place, or we're just going to orbital bombard in the place you know what i mean i just found that this one was was a, yeah it just didn't gel with me not like the edge of the empire one which i was able to adapt and turn into a couple of good starter mm. adventures the force and destiny one uh i was easily able to consider how to slip that in between two other ideas i already had it sort of just naturally happened but the age of rebellion one it just didn't seem to gel in the same way i like the idea of sneaking into the base stealing yeah. stuff or um, if you could hold it, hold it for a, a, a short period of time, like just try to get as much data as you could possibly get as mm. it kept, you know, if it was a, you know, um, a, you know, sort of that sort of a listening post, just mm. taking as much data as it was possibly giving until such time as you, you knew you had to get out of there. That I like the idea of, but the idea of holding it and actually making it your base, mm. I just, I just couldn't see how you could conceivably do that for any length of time. And you'd think that after you would... Oh, yeah, any length of time. See, it's... this One of the story orcs is that you now own the base, so any further missions that you do can be based out of this. Exactly. I just can't see yeah. how that could work over time. Yeah. At some point, they'd have to come and just try to destroy you. And you couldn't keep fighting them off and be like, okay, we're only using small groups of Imperials because we don't want the, our rival to know. It's just at some point, that's not going to fly. Someone's going to be like, hey, why is there a battalion going into the bush? Or, or losses, if you actually do happen to cause... Yeah, I guess that's the main thing. If there's no fighting going on elsewhere, if you happen to ask for more ATSTs or whatever... I mean, I'm I'm not saying you could easily take an S here, but you know what I mean? I just I just thought there was a... This one just didn't seem as connected as the others did. Yeah. Uh, overall, it's... Yeah. It, it would need a bit of work to be a real adventure, but you can do that, and there are enough story hooks in it to make it much more fleshed out but i think if you're just using it as a you know like okay we're going to move on to something else but none of you people have played i'm a gm i've never played i've got three adventures here that we can do then Mm -hmm. you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bitch about that you know what i mean like for us i saw loads of issues because we play beyond that scope but i think if you are a new gm and that it's fine this okay it doesn't make sense to me but it doesn't matter the whole point is just i've got four of my friends to sit down at a table i'm gming they're playing yeah okay it's a bit iffy but it's fine so i don't really want to slam it too much for that yeah story-wise it doesn't make much sense the um the second part of the second part that you don't know free makes a bit more sense in of it of itself um, because it is the story to it is you have a base and you need to protect it okay cool mm-hmm. um, that sort of makes sense but also that second part is a proper adventure it's not a beginner's box anymore it doesn't have any you need to do this little sidebars yep that second part of the adventure is a fully fledged adventure it works off the beginner's box, so you won't be able to... It has to have the beginner's box to work. You can't just download that and run it yourself. Yes. Um, but, I mean, hey, if you want to get the box, get it. 
We're not slamming it. We're also not going to go and read through every page of the adventure book so you can rip it off. No. You want to find out more? Get the box. Have a look through it. You're getting a lot of stuff in the box as well that makes it worth it. But if you want it for just the adventure, I wouldn't. It's good. And I think you... I'm going to... I'm rewriting it into my Star Wars adventure. Hopefully it will come out fairly shortly after this vid. And you'll see that it will work, like Ghost says, if it is in a different situation. If it's not a moth secret base, but instead it's a sort of listening post out on the outskirts or something very menial and would be fairly easy to take over. And once you've taken it over, it's you can sort of hold on to it a little bit more because it doesn't mean that much to the Empire, nor does it mean too much to a moth. Mm -hmm. I think if it meant a lot to a moth, you would be in a lot of trouble. The planet apparently is a small planet, and the moth wouldn't be that high ranking of a moth. But this is a moth against four PCs. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so, he's, he's still a governor. He still has a pretty heavy force that he can... Yeah, draw upon. And you're not going to be... Unless you're doing this adventure as a really, really highly developed character with lots of talents and skills at your disposal and the backing of the rebels, the an entire battalion, say, of rebels to be able to fight for you, then no. If you earn the ire of a moth, you're probably not going to survive it if you stand and fight. Yeah, which would make sense. Mm. An entire legion of my best troops. <laughs> We will take them all. Stand and fight, boys. Oh, no, it's not the Clone Wars. Yeah, well, we'd already left anyway. It'd just be you. <laughs> so, all in all, it's standalone, brilliant box. Highly recommend it for people getting into the game. However, if you've already gone and bought the other two, Force and Destiny or Edge of the Empire, you probably don't need it. No, you'd probably be moving towards one of the uh, core books anyway by that point. Yeah, pretty much. It's um, there's a lot of other products out there um, to get. There's different adventures. Um, they're doing the source books, which are quite good. Have a look at the different videos for that. We, yeah, we liked it as what it, it does exactly what it does. As usual, Fantasy Flight does a good job with their role playing. Yes, they do. So, yeah, kudos to them. And kudos to all of you for listening to our epically awesome review. Thank you. Hope that you can stay tuned. Keep rolling those ones, and we'll catch you next time. The Force will be with you, always. <laughs>